Hello and welcome to the user tutorial of the Doku Performer for SAP Business Warehouse. My name is Leonie Paul and today I would like to present you the interaction of our different modules, especially the modeling one. This module is primarily used in following application areas. Transferring business content objects into own namespaces. Generating info objects based on data sources. Offline modeling, documenting and exporting of objects. And supporting migration projects. As many companies nowadays struggle with switching from a legacy system to Business Warehouse on HANA or Business Warehouse for HANA, we decided to give you a detailed insight into a Doku Performer supported and simplified migration project. Thinking about it, this seems to be the perfect time to perform a system cleanup on basis of the Greenfield method. With this approach, only relevant data flows and objects are copied, new name conventions included and old DSOs InfoCubes and MultiProvider migrated into HANA-compatible objects. Without technical support, high expenses in terms of human resources and finances must be expected. That is why many users still avoid the possibility to restructure their data even if they are aware of the resulting benefits. As a consequence, the Brownfield method offers a frequently but not equivalent efficient use alternative. In the following, I would like to run you through a live migration of a practical example, showing how easy and fast the conversion can be conducted. Okay, let's start with the project and its status quo. The displayed BW objects are supposed to be imported from a legacy system, transferred into HANA compatible objects, and finally exported into the new Business Warehouse for HANA system. During this process, info provider and the info objects contained should be included in the new namespace. After completing the migration of workbench objects, also queries, reusable key figures and variables should be copied to the new info provider and adapted to the relevant namespace. In the next step, ABAP coded objects of the old system can be identified. For these particular references, the user has to decide how the included information is added to the new system. Last but not least, the entire project should be structured and clearly documented. After presenting the fundamental data of our project, let's continue with the actual implementation. As already mentioned in the beginning, such manually conducted migrations can result in high costs. Luckily, I have a powerful tool at my side, the Doku Performer. Convince yourself of the efficiency which the software offers. While a project like our sample would usually take several days, we are able to reduce the time needed to less than an hour. Too good to be true? See for yourself. The initial goal is to convert the above-mentioned objects into HANA-compatible ones and adapt the namespace. To start this process, I will import the objects into the Doku Performer software to rename and transform them. Afterwards, they will be exported back to the system. Here is how the concrete software application looks like. First of all, I would like to point out the timer in the upper right corner of the screen. It will give you an idea of the time expenditure needed for the project. To begin with, I'll open up the Indoco Performer previously created project order history to copy the necessary info provider as well as info objects. By clicking right, the project can be set active. Now I choose a source system in the import entities from SAP section. Because I would like to import an InfoCube and a DSO, I have to deactivate the checkbox for the object type multi provider and choose the other two types instead. I'm going to leave the setting for the object version to A. An alternative would be choosing version D, meaning delivery. Thus, you have the choice to import objects from business content into non-SAP namespaces without activating content objects in advance. If necessary, more than one source system can be selected in the project settings. Therefore, it is possible to consolidate even more than one system landscape. In general, IM and exports are also doable if source and target system have different release versions. Okay, now back to our project. 
to select both the info provider I insert ZSR in the filter row and take the cube to the area containing the import objects. Before starting the import, I change the value in the row new technical name to RSR A001 and choose Advanced Data Store as object type. In case that the target system isn't HANA based, the object type setting InfoCube doesn't need to be changed. The software status bar below displays the currently active step. Please note that so far info objects are only read from the SAP system and written into the database of the Doku performer. Therefore nothing is set up in SAP itself until the export. Standard SAP function modules are later used to create the old objects as for instance DSOs and InfoCubes. New objects such as ADSOs require customer-owned function modules which are also included in the Doku Performer. From there they can be automatically loaded into SAP. In doing so, the user who is executing the process has to be logged into the system with this SAP user to verify requested permissions. The import has now been completed. Let's take a closer look at the structure of the info provider. The ADSO consists exclusively of business contact info objects. In the next step, I'll start with the renaming of these info objects initiated by the Rename Info Objects button. Besides the objects themselves, you can also see the attributes, combining and so on. Given by the project, the names of the new info objects have to begin with the prefix SR. To realize this modification, I insert the prefix and cut off the first two characters of the original names. Using the automatic reduction function, I shorten the names to their permitted length. However, by doing so, duplicates might be created, which then have to be edited manually. This can be easily done by sorting the objects by the technical name and replace the last character with a number consecutively starting with 1. Of course, as an alternative, I could also adapt the naming conventions for each identified duplicate separately. You might have also noticed that some business contact info objects haven't been renamed. The reason for this is that certain objects simply aren't allowed to be renamed. As for example OFISPAIR, a list of such expectations can be found and individually extended in the project settings. Upon saving and closing the renaming dialog, you can see that the info provider now also includes the renamed objects together with the business contact objects. Next, I'm going to import a DSO as a level 0 ADSO. Obviously, it would have been easier to import the DSOs all together at once with the cube. However, I would like to demonstrate how the system operates if already renamed objects are imported once again. Consequently, the DSO does include such info objects which have already been renamed during the cube import. A new window appears suggesting to use the previously renamed objects to stay consistent within the project. Looking at the list of the modeled objects, we can now find both of the renamed and transformed ADSOs in the project. In this screen, various changes of imported objects can be made like adding new groups to the ADSO or assigning additional attributes to characteristics. But since our short project only intends to give you a brief insight of potential options, I would like to move on by exporting all new objects into the new target system BI1. This might for instance be a Business Warehouse ON or Business Warehouse 4 HANA. Using the drag and drop function, I'm moving the ADSOs into the export area and subsequently select a catalog to which the info objects should be transferred. For info provider, I choose the respective info areas. 
To prevent any issues when activating or setting up objects in the target system, a check needs to be performed before the actual export. The main purpose is to review whether used business contact objects are already existing in the target system. Also, it verifies if compounding and references from the object of the modeling project match those in the target system too. If so, they are simply reused, otherwise the program will display a warning. Missing objects receive a note in their status field indicating that they have to be set up by activating business content. Generally speaking, the target system only allows to set up new objects, not to edit existing ones. And finally, we can start the export. This might take a moment. The Doku Performer creates one info object after another and then activates them all together in one step. All dependencies between the objects are taken into account as well as the activation sequence. You can now follow live how objects are created in SAP. Those highlighted in green are activated objects. Looking at the info provider, they've been successfully created as well. Having now renamed all the relevant objects, I'm going to do the same with the queries from the info cube. Unlike the old data model, they are supposed to be copied to a newly generated HANA composite provider based on the old info cubes. I'll then proceed to add a transformation between the new ADSOs. Here you can see the newly created HCPR and transformations. As the SAP standard functionality was used to prepare those, I'll skip the step of explaining this particular process in detail. Before I go any further, I would like to provide you with some more information about copying queries in general. Number 1. Queries can also be copied even if the target info provider contains different info objects than the source info provider. Number 2. When copying more than one query, restricted key figures used multiple times can be copied too. Unfortunately, using the SAP standard functionality, this isn't possible as objects will have duplicates. Going back to our example, I'll begin with the copying process by clicking on the Copy Reporting Elements button. We are now going to choose the source system and the object type queries. Entering the technical name ZSR IC01, we can select a query from our old queue. The source info provider is represented by the previously generated HCPR called VSR H001. Moving on, I'm going to create the mapping between the old and the new objects by clicking the Next button. In the background, the system receives the query definition from SAP and each element with its own technical name is identified. Those can be info objects, reporting elements or variables, calculated and restricted key figures, as well as structures and filter. Moreover, technical names of reporting elements and their included objects can be renamed manually. To begin with, I select a name for the query and start a consistency check. The Doku Performer then validates the query, technical names and sees if all required objects are part of the source system. In our case, almost every object is highlighted in red. So that means we have to do some manual adjustments. Let's begin with the info objects. Those are indicated as not valid because the old query uses the business contact info objects of the old info cubes and these can't be found in the new info provider due to the renaming. Therefore, each info object is tested whether it is included in the target info provider. If not, the query will prevent the creation. No need to worry, we can easily fix this problem thanks to the Doku Performer. The software remembers all previous renamings of info objects and offers such proposals by means of the Proposed Replacements of Tech Names control. And it worked! Redoing the consistency check, we can notice that a couple of warnings have already disappeared. However, we can still find invalid elements in the lists, for example reusable key figures. 
The warning says that objects with the same technical name are already in the target system. As a result, the key figures have to be renamed too. In addition, the modeling tool must create them on basis of the new HCPRs. For the warnings of variables, it applies that they are defined on an info object level. Because the names of the info objects have changed and variables with the same technical name are contained by the target system on different info objects, we have to rename them. Afterwards, they will be created by the modeling module. When conducting a third consistency check, the Doku performer informs me that new variables and reusable key figures can be created. This successfully completes the preparation phase when the query can be created as there is no invalid or missing data left. By apply target values, the data changes so that the current status is displayed in the modeling module and can be transferred to the SAP tables. According to the appearing dialog box, we can finally complete the copy process of the query by pressing the Start Creation button. We'll receive a return code equal zero, which means no fault has been found while copying. Hereafter, I'll open up the previous tab and choose the second query. With a small name change, I'll differentiate this one by adding the number 2 to it. The function Propose Replacements of Tag Names shows that even the first consistency check is now correct for this query. This follows from the fact that the Doku performer remembers every renaming from the query number 1. Taking the same steps, I'm using the Apply Target Values and Start Creation buttons to create a new query. In order to verify if the copying process was successful, the analysis function and its compare objects tool is of great help. It compares the old and new structure of a query. Select the checkbox Compare and drag and drop source and target queries to the right side. With parallel scrolling, both queries can be comfortably be compared. Also differences can be indicated with the automatic comparison button. Looking more closely, we can find the query structures are almost identical, but still certain elements are marked red. Those are reusable objects, for instance calculated and restricted key figures, which we've renamed and copied before. Ok, the second step of our project is completed. To finalize the project, some last alternations are required. Again, the Doku Performer acts as a supporting component to identify web templates, BO objects and ABAP coding, for example. Some of these objects still reference to obsolete objects. The next steps will show how the Doku Performer supports the manual update of these incorrect references. So if I would like to find out which reporting objects are used by the old queries, I open the function where used list for BW objects, choose the object type query and search for defaulted query. Subsequently, I initiate the analysis by a double click. I'm going to test the usage of the query in web templates and BO objects and start the analysis. The result shows that the query is used from a web template and both BO objects shown. Manually modification in SAP are now easy to handle thanks to the identification in advance. A basic requirement to replace the info provider of a data flow is to adapt the relevant parts of the coding in the SAP system. This includes for instance transformation and info object routines. They can be identified using the where used list for BW objects function. For now, I'm going to conduct a where used list for info provider of the data flow. I'm activating the verification of ABAP coding in this dialog window to display all the places where info provider and tables of the info provider can be found in the ABAP code.
If a DSO is used with the transformation rule read from data store, it will show up in the results too. To finalize the main task of our project, a manual modification by applying the SAP standard functionalities is required. For the project's final touch-up, I'm going to document its entire data flow. No problem for the Doku performer, which simply performs this task at the touch of a button. A complete documentation of the project at all relevant objects is enabled by a scenario. For our project, I assigned the necessary objects to the previously created scenario, Project 1, HANA Migration. You can find them in the right column. By double-clicking, I can open the scenario designer. As you can see, the objects are already categorized to the different chapters by the Doku performer. A scenario documentation is initiated by pressing the upper button and choosing the right format. Last but not least, I'm using the export button to create the documentation. the entire project clearly documented. That's it, we are done. We just finished the last step of our example project and guess what? We finished it in just a little bit more than 25 minutes. Compared to manual performance using the SAP standard functionalities, our project status would only be at 3%. In total, it would have taken us up to 16 hours to come to the same result without a Doku performer. Furthermore, we have to consider that generally speaking, projects are way more complex than ours in reality which means that the number of objects to migrate increases and with it the time exposure for manual migration. To come to an end, I will sum up our lessons learned. Following our example case, you notice that the Doku Performer accelerates the process enormously. Additionally, the tool offers a variety of comfortable functionalities which make the handling of projects quite easy. Time saving is mainly achieved by the automated collection of info objects and info provider while importing into the modeling module. Our software gives you the ideal support to fulfill the greenfield approach at a reasonable expense. Further, the Doku performer can be used as a supportive component during a remodeling process. Also, I demonstrated how simple it is to change names because not every object needs to be renamed individually. The analysis function reminds the user of relevant places which need to be adapted manually in SAP afterwards. Without the adjustment, the data flow or reporting data would be displayed incorrectly. I hope I was able to point out the Doku performer's efficiency in this short tutorial and especially the benefits of the modeling module. If you are also interested in our other modules, documentation, commenting and analysis, please feel free to visit our webpage or watch one of our other videos for further details. Thank you for your attention and until next time. Bye!